All right, well, I'm here with Angela Zadepec. She is the sales director and business development lead for uh, Victa Energy. Thank you very much for coming out. Yeah, it's awesome to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, you guys have been great in allowing all of my viewers to see the whole process from the beginning to the end. And yeah. this is actually a major milestone day because this is the end of the most of the uh, installation, but for the first time, the system was connected to the power grid. So what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, it's so exciting. I mean, yeah, we just received PTO. So the utility came out, done the, did the final inspection and said, we're good to go. So I was just speaking with the homeowner and now is an exciting time to download the Tesla app and connect the system and you're up and running. So that's actually a good segue into a question that is very common with viewers and also with Debbie, the homeowner uh, on part one, and that is, she thought she was going to be working with Tesla, but uh, during the whole process, she found out she's going to be working with a partner. So how does that actually work with Tesla and what can the customer expect uh, during this process? Yeah, that's a great question. So Tesla's really shifted their model to really rely more on their partners. It's not like, hey, we're versus Tesla. We're really an extension mm -hmm. and an expression of Tesla. We work very closely with their teams. They're still very much a part of the processes and projects that we do. We work with their engineering on all the solar roof. Mm -hmm. But really what I think is brilliant with this partner model, because each utility and city has its own rules about, hey, you can install power walls here or this is our code on the electrical. Like every AHJ and utility has very different rules and requirements. And so when you look at the partner model, they have basically reached out to qualified companies and had them certified that can say, hey, own this territory. You work with the local jurisdictions all the time. You know their processes. And so that's really what we're doing at Victa. We cover a lot of Central Texas, but really it's exciting. We're starting to cover South Texas, mm -hmm. Nevada, Arizona, and Florida as well. So we're really just growing as a company. It's fun. Okay. So the partners bring that kind of the local knowledge of what's going on. And yeah. with this particular installation, there were some challenges specifically with the power company, their equipment that they had, yeah. and some of the equipment uh, that was already in place with the uh, house. So yeah. um, how did you, how did Victor work with the owner to work through those challenges? Yeah. And one other thing about, you know, the partners, partner model, I'd say 75% of the homes we do with solar roof mm. are new construction. Okay. Um, it is very time consuming and it's not just, Hey, go slap panels on a mm. roof, right? Like you plant, we have a project manager that works with the GC or construction team and we plan out the phases of like the pre-wire, right? Like we did the pre-wire mm. here before the drywall went up because we want to make sure that looks really good, looks really sleek. We don't have any of that. Mm ugly external conduit, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we work in phases. And I think one thing that us as a partner, we really bring is that concierge approach to really, we know it's going to take time. This isn't mm -hmm. an overnight process, but probably the biggest, one of the biggest challenges with this particular home, and I wouldn't say challenge, it's just something that you work around is her transformer was a certain size. And mm -hmm. so we had to tweak that kilowatt system. But a really important note about when you go solar with solar roof, parts of this process are at the pace of the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So we can move really fast, but then we're waiting kind of for that permitting. Mm -hmm. So, And that's actually fairly common with most solar installations, not just yeah. this one or with Victa. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the homeowner here had mentioned that uh, one of the the things that kind of frustrated a little bit is that everything was done, but it was still not connected. And that had to do with the local power company and their process, not necessarily yeah. with the, with you. Exactly. Like the second the roof is finished, we say, Hey, it's ready for inspection. Mm -hmm. And then they let us know, okay, this is when we can come out. So all right, well, cool. Well, so you're helping with the customer get to those frustrating points about yeah. the uh, uh, installation. How, how do you actually interact with the customer? The reason why I ask that is those of you who are familiar with Tesla products know that, uh, like with their vehicles, yeah. you use the app all the time to contact Tesla, to make service, to, to get all the information. How does that work with solar roof? Yeah, so a lot of it is automated because you have the Tesla app with the solar roof. You're going to get, hey, when a storm's moving in, storm watch, it's going to let you know your power walls mm -hmm. are filling up. Um, our processes at Victor are very automated, but I think we can all appreciate 
also having a human to talk to. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, our sales director, I really, I actually end up being friends with our clients. Like mm -hmm. I want a personal relationship. Most of the time they have my phone or, you know, a client has their project manager's phone number. Mm -hmm. We want to be reachable. I think that's so frustrating when you're like, I can't get a hold of anybody. Right. So I think that's a big thing we want to bring from Victa is just that customer service and just being able to get someone mm -hmm. that same day. Yeah. I think a lot of my viewers would appreciate that because it is sometimes frustrating yeah. when all I want to do is talk to a human. Yeah, it's and, like, no more robots, right. <laughs> please. Yeah. All right, so uh, another thing that uh, is a common question that I've gotten from viewers, uh, not, I'm not going to talk about the overall cost because it varies so much. As your CEO, Carson, said, each build is different. Yeah. The requirements from the homeowners change, requirements for the building changes, and with the, in this case, accounting and the power uh, company. Mm -hmm. But as far as... How, would, how do the payments work on this? Is it all up front? Is it spread out through the installation or is yeah. it at the end of the process? Yeah, good question. We have four payment milestones. Mm -hmm. So you have a deposit at the beginning, then the next payment milestone is first day materials arrive on site. Mm -hmm. And the third is when installation completes. And the fourth is when you receive PTO. So when your utility says, this looks good, the system can be used now. All right, cool. Another common that I, question that I get is about warranties. Now, now, we yeah. see on the Tesla site, it says the solar roof is warranted for, I think, 25 years. Correct. And I think the power walls and the gateway is, what, 10 years? 10 is years. That correct? Mm -hmm. So the warranties are there, but since we're working with a partner, how mm -hmm. does that work? How does the homeowner, if they need a warranty repair, get that taken care of? Yeah. So Tesla, obviously, if it's installed by a partner, Tesla still honors that mm. warranty. And as far as an installation warranty, we offer a five-year warranty. Okay. So, you know, for the first five years, if something wasn't installed correctly, mm. then that can be fixed. But the product warranty is still by Tesla. All right. And if there were to be an issue that the customer is concerned about, do they, do they reach out to Tesla and then they coordinate with you or do they reach out to you? Reach out to us. Okay. Definitely. You know, another question I know people are interested in is, what is the return on investment of installing a Tesla solar roof versus some other product that they may choose to use? Yeah, I mean, I that's probably one of the most asked questions is, okay, I'm trying to pencil this out. I wanna see what the ROI is. And what I always say to people is, look, this is a premium roof. Like mm. this is a very strong roof, but it's not just a roof, it's also solar. So we have a lot of people, we actually do this, Victa, as a company, we will provide a cash flow analysis mm. and really show a comparison with the energy savings, with the tax incentive, but it truly is not apples to apples when you're like, oh, well, this to a metal roof mm -hmm. because you're also generating power. So um, obviously in states where there's a, electricity is a lot higher, like Arizona, California, we even did um, a cash flow in Puerto Rico. Mm. They were cash flow positive in year three because energy is just more expensive there. So mm -hmm. um, it is a bigger upfront investment, but I think as you pencil out those energy savings, tax incentive over time, and your roof is incredibly mm. strong and not going to get hail damage like a traditional roof where you replace mm -hmm. the whole thing. It's just a different, it's a different mindset and it's not so black and white with, mm -hmm. you know, what's the ROI compared to a metal roof. Yeah, that's actually maybe a consideration for viewers too, is if your roof does already need replacing yes. and you're thinking about solar, maybe this is a better option for you because you're getting both. Yeah. And I think the way that this home was done is also a way to value engineer it. Like you don't have to do your entire roof. We can mm -hmm. also do portions of the roof where it's the most optimal planes. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a great example of that, where it looks amazing. You get the solar benefits and you also had a, a good price at the compared to the full roof. Right. So. And uh, I've been showing some drone shots here of how the final roof looks like. And you'll see that half yeah. of it is that standing metal seam kind of a copper and the other is the solar roof and part of the design uh, choice on that was uh, the way the house is built on one side it just looks like a metal roof yeah and then if you're on the complete other side it looks like the solar roof and they don't really come together so it worked out really well here yeah it looks great now you know this has been you know, about a three-ish month project from the beginning to yeah. now uh, there's been some challenges with some weather um, there's been some challenges with the power company and some of the equipment um, 
Was there any challenge getting the actual hardware for the solar roof installation from Tesla? And how does that process work between a partner yeah. and Tesla? Yeah, no, we don't have, we didn't have any issues. So we have really thought this through because mm -hmm. the last thing we want to do is like order from Tesla and it's all delivered on site and not sorted and organized. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like this giant puzzle to put together. Yeah. So we have everything sent to our warehouse. We have our warehouse coordinator organize it, get everything ready, then we have it shipped to site mm -hmm. and make sure that all of our inventory is there before we get started. So Tesla's been really great though to work mm -hmm. with for inventory management and um, no issues for all supply. Right. All right, yeah. well, you know, I, I know that uh, we're gonna hear from uh, Debbie, the homeowner here, just in a, uh, just after this part of the video, but I can tell you that they are very excited about to having it completed and now being commissioned, so it's working, yeah. and uh, just looking forward to seeing how they uh, have this, uh, this wonderful house and their, uh, yeah. their kind of their objectives come to fruition. And again, thank you very much for coming out and talking. If they want to reach out to Victa, how can they do that? Yeah. And I'll put your link on the uh, screen as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes, I mean, and we do solar panel systems as well, ground mounts, like we want to support energy goals and really bring the world to sustainability. So victaenergy.com, and we would love to you know, help answer any questions you may have, give you a great experience. And yeah, thank you so much for having me on. All right. Well, thank you very much, Angela. Yeah. I very much appreciate yeah. it. And I know that the viewers are appreciating just hearing all this information as they have questions too. And sometimes it's not so easy to get the answers. So I very much appreciate that. Yeah. All right, well, I'm back out here with Debbie at her beautiful home. As you can see, the solar roof is installed and we just had a milestone for you today. And that is the power is now completely connected. The power yeah. walls are working. Even though it's uh, overcast, the solar panels are working. So what does that mean to you? Or what do you think? It's hot, so I can use air conditioning. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have power, that's great. All right, well, you know, the last time we talked to you was at the beginning. Right. And you were talking about your thoughts about doing the solar uh, panels and the roof and your choice with going with Tesla. Kind of curious, uh, what would you say has been your experience now that we've gotten to the end? And what would you say to people who are considering doing this in the future? Um, once you decide to do the solar, it's not an immediate fix okay. like it would be a normal roof. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I got the backside of the roof done, it was done in a week. Okay. This was what we signed January 5th, the contract, and today is April 16th. Okay. So it's been, what, a three month, mm -hmm. January, February, March, three and a half month process. Okay. So you'd have to be prepared to be patient. Okay. It's not an overnight deal. All right, and for those who uh, may not have watched part one and part two, uh, also part three, uh, your roof is two kinds of roof. On the back, you have a standing metal seam roof, and that's the one that didn't take very long because it was just the metal, right? Right. And then you have the front part, which is the Tesla solar roof. Now, you know, about a three month journey from when you started to now, and you know, it is good to know that it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, do you know, Aubrey, what, what would you say about one of the, some of the reasons why it took so long in your, in your opinion? Well, you have to get the permission from your electric company. Okay. Um, every plan is individual, so mm -hmm. it's customized. It's like going to an architect for your roof. Mm -hmm. So it has to be customized for your house. Um, and just the installation alone takes like 10 days, whereas my standing metal seam roof takes like two days. Right. So we had six or seven guys for 10 days mm -hmm. because all those tiles have wires that have to be connected. They have to go to the right home run spot right. yep. <laughs> and all that. So it's just, everything just takes longer than what we're used to with a traditional roof. Okay. Now, one of the things that you had mentioned is working with the electric company. And in fact, that's kind of sort of the last step that just started or just happened today. And that was getting them out to do the final commissioning and making sure it was ready to go on. And if you are doing a, any solar roof uh, installation, that's going to be somewhat similar. But were there any, um, any surprises for you along the way with getting it actually finally commissioned? Not finally. I think it's been a long process. I know 
Victa Energy has had to meet with them mm -hmm. repeatedly because it's such a new technology, they're not familiar with mm -hmm. it. So they basically had to educate our electric company um, as to how this all works. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing about the electric company that maybe an issue that you ran into uh, that some might have the same uh, issue is the county's electrical system and equipment really wasn't well suited for the solar roof. So what did that do for your installation? We had planned on getting 209 photo cells or photo tiles mm -hmm. installed. We had to reduce it by 5% by nine tiles. Mm -hmm. um, but we had already planned on 115% production of, of energy mm -hmm. to cover our needs. So we're still going to be basically only using solar to run the house. Okay. So we had to reduce it a little bit um, because our transformer, they said, couldn't handle if we were generating power back to them. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that I learned is that some of the counties in towns, some of the town, actually it's more by town than county, but some of the towns have regulated electrical um, providers. Mm -hmm. Some are deregulated. And that's even in the state of Texas. From town to town, it's different from place to place. I mean, you and I live a mile apart, mm -hmm. and your provider is different than my Correct. provider, yep. but we're both regulated. Mm -hmm. I moved here from Dallas Fort Worth, and that was a deregulated um, area where I was at the time. Mm -hmm. So you don't know from place to place what you're, what kind of regulation you're in until you start checking. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, something that you may not really discover until you're into the process. Right. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, something that if you're considering any type of solar roof, whether it's just the traditional ones or this one that you might want to keep in mind uh, as you go through that process. Now, there is another electrical system that you had to have upgraded that really wasn't related to the roof or the power walls per se, but that has to do with your main circuit breaker panel. What happened with that? Well, they opened it up. They were getting ready to connect the two systems and they opened it up and lo and behold, there had been water leaking into the box. Mm -hmm. Who knows how long? Um, we were just happy that it hadn't exploded as a result of mm -hmm. that water. So the whole, our whole electrical panel had to be replaced mm -hmm. also. All right, and again, that, that may be something that you encounter with your home uh, as they do some of these uh, pretty large electrical changes to your home. Uh, most of your systems have to meet code and be able to be safely operated. And in your particular case, you found out it needed to be replaced. Right, it needed to be replaced. Um, and in our county, we don't have any building codes. Mm. And so in doing all this work, we're finding that there was a lot of DIY done in mm -hmm. the house that wasn't necessarily up to standard. Um, so every step of the way, we've had to change things okay. with each of the systems. Well, I appreciate you, uh, you know, giving us your story and your experience with that, because I know many you, uh, viewers out there are interested in what's going on. And, and I've actually seen several comments about people saying that they really appreciate you allowing us to see the process because they've been considering doing this, but for various reasons, they've either postponed it or, or they weren't sure if they wanted to move forward. But now with this, it's actually helped quite a bit of people. So I very much appreciate that. You're welcome. I, I, it's been interesting. I've gone to the to your blog and to, onto the YouTube and looked at comments yeah. and, you know, it's like, okay, if you want to address questions, I know one of the things was, how come they tore off the old metal roof that was there that looked perfectly mm -hmm. good, but in, this doesn't go over an existing roof. It right. goes over as you were looking at phases, you know, one through three or videos one through three. There's an underlayment that makes it waterproof. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we couldn't save the metal roof that was there because the way that you had to get it off, you just, you have to cut it to right. get it off once it's clipped into, into place. I mean, it... We had hoped that we could reuse the metal roof here and put it on the back, but that wasn't, mm. you know, a possibility. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much again for opening your home and allowing 
viewers from all over the world to see what's going on. I think it has helped them. And, uh, you know, I, again, I just really appreciate that and also allowing me to come out and spend so much time here. I, I do appreciate it. And now that it's essentially done and you have power and everything is working, I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, hopefully you are able to achieve your objectives that you started out with uh, at the beginning. Well, and my objective is for everybody to get educated so that most everybody that watches this wants to go in the direction of solar, because mm. I think that's what we have to do to nurture our Earth. Mm. So. All right. Well, thank you very much. And again, thank you all for watching. I hope that you appreciated this uh, four-part series showing the process from the very beginning through removing the old roof, putting on the underlayment, installing the solar roof, and of course, what we talked about earlier in the video, the installation of the power walls, the gateway, and how the whole system works. So I do hope that you found this informative and educational, and I hope that it helps you in your decision-making process. As always, thank you very much for your support and for watching my channel. Take care.